Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of my reading statistics for the first six months of 2022. In this video, we are not going to be getting into any like favorites so far of the year, or we're not going to be talking about my DNFs. I will be doing a midway check in for all of the books that I have DNF'd up to this point. We will touch very briefly on my statistics for DNFs, but we will not go into any detail. That video will be coming shortly. I think it's in like two or three weeks. So stay tuned to watch that. What we're really going to be doing is getting into all of the nitty gritty statistical details that I absolutely love seeing, except instead of doing them for my monthly reading like I do every single month as part of my wrap up, we are going to be doing it for my six months of reading so far, along with a goal check in to see if I'm still on track for all of my goals, if I'd like to change any of my goals, whether making them harder or easier or whatnot. Stick around, get buckled in, get your water and let's get started. First up, I have read almost 11,000 pages as of today. So today is June 20th. So all of my statistics are 10 days short of the actual halfway point of the year. That really doesn't affect things until you look at the month to month ratios that we'll be talking about later on. This comes out to an average of 62 books a day, which I originally thought my goal was to read 60 pages a day. It was, that is what my goal was, but I set out to read a total of 24,000 pages. So I will talk a little bit about that in the adjustment of my goals, but clearly I did some math wrong at the beginning of the year because I have read more than 60 pages a year, but I have not hit 12,000 pages read. I have read approximately 326 hours through audio, which I feel like is kind of down from last Last year, which I'm fine with because I was trying to focus a little bit more on physically reading this year. I have read 71 books and I have DNF'd 21 books, which I actually believe is low for the DNFs and pretty much average for the actual reads. And then when you look at my ratings, I have a 3.4 average with seven books being a one star to 1.5, 19 books being a two star to 2.5, 14 books being a three star to 3.5, 13 books being a four star to 4.25, and then 18 books being a 4.5 to a five star. I know that the four and five stars get a little bit wishy because they're not exactly the same as the other statistics, but there's no such thing as a 5.5 and there's no such thing as a 0.5. So that's kind of how I categorize things because I do tend to rate books more often as a 4.5 than a five star. So I just round up in this case, whereas in the other ones I round down. As for months that I have read the most in, this is where things get a little bit weird with June. So in January, I read 11 books. In February, I read 12. In March, I read 10. In April, I read 13. In May, I read 18. And in June so far, I have read seven. I fully expect that number to be between 10 and 12 by the end of the month. But as of right now, I've only read seven, although I'm currently reading one book. So it's definitely going to be eight. As for the genres I have read, 23 have been fantasy. That is my biggest read genre and it is at 32%. So just about a third of my reading is in fantasy. That is quite low, although you can see in the other category that fantasy romance is categorized as separate. So if I put them together, it would make things just slightly higher, but really overall, it's not affecting things like a ton. I think that going into the second half of the year, I am going to focus more on reading things I know I'm going to like and trying to avoid a lot of those like smaller genres that I definitely don't care so much about. I want to keep reading fantasy. I want to keep reading sci-fi. I want to keep reading horror, magical realism, thrillers, of course, and I don't mind graphic novels, but a lot of the other ones I am just not going to prioritize as much. Or what was happening, I believe, is that I was trying to just get a book in to fulfill a prompt or to fulfill something that I really wasn't attached to the book, but I was just reading it because whatever. So I'd like to have less of that happening. Now with the rest of the chart, I read nine horror books, seven sci-fi books, seven fantasy romance, six magical realism, six mystery, four thrillers, four graphic novels, one fiction, two dystopian, one anthology, and one contemporary. I also count dystopian separate from science fiction. So of course that would change the number slightly as well. I would not mind reading more dystopian because I love that genre and I'm kind of shocked I didn't read more of it 
this past six months. As for the age demographic, I'm pretty happy with this. So I read 45 adult, 7 new adult, and 19 young adult with zero middle grades. I wouldn't mind reading a middle grade or two, but generally speaking, they don't call to me, so I don't read them. But I like that my young adult is a lot lower than my adult because I've been feeling this pull and this call to read more adult books and less YA books. I've just been not connecting to YA books. I think part of it is I am growing up and so I don't want to read them and then trash on them because I know there is a good audience out there for them. I know there are people who will love them so I don't want to read and hate them and review them and be out there shitting on these books that really are great for the target audience when I no longer feel like the target audience. Of course there are always going to be some YA books that I love and I never want to have that number be completely zero but I do want to see it coming down over the next few years a lot more than it was especially the last two years of my life. As for where I read from I read 36 owned books, 31 library books, and nine arcs. That doesn't equal 71. That is because some of my owned and library I read both because I will listen to to like the library audio and I will physically read my own book or vice versa or maybe I'll have the ebook and then I'll also be listening to the audio. That also means that in the next statistics it's also still wishy-washy where I read 19 physical books, 45 audiobooks, and 12 ebooks. So my goal this year was to read more pages but I didn't necessarily want to be reading more physical books. So 19 physical books I'm pretty happy with because that averages out to a about three physical books a month and then also if you're including ebooks you know I'm reading probably two of those a month as well so with my eyeballs I'm reading about five books a month not including all of the DNFs that we have so I'm happy with that my goal was to read bigger books with my eyes so I don't totally think I've accomplished that goal I think I've just ended up reading a lot of physical books with my eyeballs and the pages add up after a while so I will be talking about that and how I want to adjust for it at the end. Up next this chart is a little bit hard to understand so let me talk you through it all. So here I have what my goal is, where I should be at, and then where I am actually at and I will read off the numbers for you. So I wanted to read 120 books this year which means that I should have 60 read at this point. I have 71 read so I am above target. I will talk about that at the end when I talk about my readjustments for goals as well. As for pages, I just put 24 in this chart so we would actually be able to read the chart and it is actually 24,000 pages that I wanted to have read which means at this point I should have 12,000 pages read and I am just at 11,000 as we speak. So I'm a thousand lower. As for my 22 to read in 2022, there are of course 22 books on that list which means that at the halfway point I should have 11 read and instead I have six read. This will be another goal that I will be talking about adjusting as we go. And then as for series, I had 32 books from series that I wanted to count as high priority this year, which means I should have 16 of those books done and I have 11 of them done. And once again, we'll talk about this some more later. As for my hauled stats, these statistics are actually the ones that upset me the most and I'm really glad that I put these on here. I thought about not even doing the statistics to find them out, but last minute I decided to include them and I think this is a nice awakening for myself to remind myself to stop buying books unless I am literally going to be reading that book right away. As for books that I've bought this year, the way that I count hauled books, just for your guys' clarification, is if I buy a book and I have not already read it. So if I have previously read a book because it was an ARC or it was a library book and I decide to add it to my collection, I don't count it as hauled. So that means I have bought more books than 37, but that doesn't really affect my TBR so that's why I don't count those. That means I have bought 37 books this year that I have not read. I want that number to be a lot lower in the next six months but I think I have some ideas for how I can make that happen. Out of those 37 books I have now read nine of them. I feel like that number should be a lot different. Unfortunately, it is not as high as I'd like. Five of those are pre-orders that are currently not in my hand, so I could not read those books, which means that I have had 23 books added to my physical TBR or my audiobook TBR over the course of the last six months. Now saying that, my own TBR is actually down from last 
December, which is nice and I want to keep going in that direction. I really, really, really have a goal in mind. I don't even think it's like a physical goal of like I want to hit 20 books or whatnot. I think I'll know it when I get there, but as of right now, I just want to get things off of the shelves. I have 35 books owned and on my physical or audiobook shelf. I do believe that there are like seven or eight audiobooks and the rest are physical, but I might have like three or four that I have both audio and physical. I'm not exactly sure. I know there's at least two. I have 12 arcs. My number seems to just sit right around that 12 mark and I can't seem to get it down but I definitely want to work on that in the future and just make it more of a priority to get my arcs cleared although I do think I have been very successful over the past three months specifically getting those down. As for paused I have three books on my paused shelf. Um, I have put lots more books on pause but I don't have that number counted and I, I don't keep track of that every single month to month because sometimes I'll pick them up later and finish them or sometimes I decide to DNF them later so it's just a hard number for me to keep track of. As of this current moment I have three. Pre-orders I have five we briefly talked about that and for my currently reading we have one. So let's check in with my goal. Starting at the top of my goals I said I wanted to read 120 books. It looks like that is going to be no problem whatsoever ever. So my whole entire idea with 120 was I didn't want to feel like I was forced to read and so I didn't want to have it like too high but I also wanted to be able to spend time with thicker books, big boys, chunkers, tomes, whatever you want to call them. So I will not be changing my Goodreads number because I would like to read less books in the second half of the year and focus more on bigger books. But in my head, I will not be mad if I hit 140 books this year, meaning that I've just doubled the number I'm currently at. If I go higher than 150, I think I will probably need to sit down and talk with myself about things. My next goal was to read more big books, getting myself a total page count of 2400 pages. So when I did the math for 60 pages a day um, that will actually put me just around 2200 pages. So that will be my goal for right now to try and hit and if I hit that then I'm going to continue on and try to hit 2400. So as long as I hit kind of between those two numbers I'm going to be pretty happy with myself. I feel like I haven't been prioritizing big books. So recently I released a video called Big Book Week and it's something I'd like to do possibly every month but definitely every other month where I have a jar now as part of TBRopoly that when I land on certain tiles I can either pull out of the jar or if I get to the end of TBRopoly and I don't have any books over 500 pages I will be pulling from the jar to get myself a chunker. I'll be talking about that more in July's TBRopoly so we can go more in depth there but basically I want to put big books on my TBR and I want to make them a priority. Big books in my mind really are anything over 500 pages but I'd really like to focus on anything over 600 pages moving forward. I'm for the sake of the jar put in anything on my TBR or am I want to read that was over 480 pages because I know things are a little bit different from genre to genre. I also made a series priority reads list where I had 32 books on there that are part of series that I really wanted to prioritize this year. Like I said, I should be at 16 and as of right now I am at 11. So a lot of these series I am no longer prioritizing. So I had Wheel of Time, which I am not going to be focusing on for the time being because I just hit a rut with them. I kind of am in the mindset that I'm just going to skip book four because it is not calling to me and just go straight into book five. Kind of on the fence about it. We're seeing what's going on. If I did that, I would read a summary of The Shadow Rising online. There's a lot of thought that's going into that and a lot of like behind the scenes stuff as to why I would do that. But as of right now, I'm kind of leaning towards it. As for Course of Dragons, I have officially finished that series. So all of those books are read and that felt really good to finish that up. As for The First Law, I did finish the trilogy and then I did move on to best serve cold but I soft dnf that and I do plan on picking it back up over the course of the next two weeks to give it another shot. As for The Tide Child, I have not started any of those books, which I am fine with because I wanted to start and finish The Wounded Kingdom first. I have not done that. I started the first book and I finished it and I really enjoyed it. Wounded Kingdom. And then I started the second book and it was like five years later. And that is just weirdly something that I don't like in series when you have like a weird time jump between books. So I put it down and I've been thinking about it a lot. And I think I'm not going to continue on with this series, unfortunately. Um, I know that people have told me that I'm really going to like it and that it's going to be a really good series and that the books are really good. 
but I have unhauled my copies because I figure if I decide to read them, I can read the ebooks. There is just something about that jump in time that like really did me dirty and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But that does mean that I will be moving on to the bone ship without finishing this series. So it's just a matter of time for when I can get to it. As for the live ship, I just wanted to read the first book and that have not done that yet. That's fine. I fully planned on reading that in the second half of the year anyways. I have not read either of the Poison War books by Sam Hawk. That is fine. I just bought the first book recently so it is on my tbr now and it'll be something i think i'm gonna get to in the next three months and then i was supposed to read the first book in both series by peter v brett so i have officially read the warded man and i enjoyed it but i didn't love it and i actually have decided i would like to continue on and finish that series before i move on to read the desert prince so i will be picking up book two probably over the course of the next month or two and then if i like that one i will continue on if i don't i will go into the desert a print. It is all very fluid. My next goal was to enjoy the books I read more or to DNF when I wasn't enjoying. I am failing at this. I am epically failing at this. I am not DNFing as much as I normally do. I'm not totally sure what's going on with me and why I'm feeling this way, but I am. And I feel like genuinely I am not enjoying books right now. Like I am. There have been some books that I really loved, but overall I have just not been enjoying reading like I used to and I think some of it is because I am branching out and forcing myself to read certain things. I think some of it is because I'm reading genres not fantasies like I'm focusing on things that I don't normally love like things that aren't fantasy and I think some of it is that I am just trying out some different things in fantasy and they're not working for me. I'd like to sit down and break down my reads and see what really are my lowest reads overall, but that's something I didn't do for this video. So I don't actually know like what is succeeding and what is failing, but maybe I should do that. I wanted to read more indie published or smaller published, less known books. Um, I think I'm doing just about the same as I always am, which isn't what I wanted. I wanted to focus on it and I haven't like really branched out and reached out for any. I have just kind of kept it the same as always. So I would like in the coming year to uh, focus more on that and make it more of a priority. And then I wanted to explore more horrors and thrillers. I am totally doing that and I am totally loving it. Now as for my 22 to read in 2022, if you watch my weekly reading vlogs, you know that I have been struggling with this list a lot. What were my numbers that we just spoke about? So I'm supposed to have 11 read as of right now and I only have eight read. I went through the list of the rest of the 14 books on that list and there are like six to eight of them that I still have interest in. I don't have an exact number because some of them I'm like I might still have interest in them, but I don't have interest in them right now. There were two of those. And then there were six that I was genuinely still interested in reading. So that tile on the board is going to go away after June. And that will be my big book bucket, which we'll be talking about more later. I just don't want to force myself to be reading these books because they are not something that I am enjoying and I want to be able to focus more on my big books and things that I actually want to read. A lot of people left some really good suggestions as to what I should change that tile to. Some people said I shouldn't even put anything in there. I should just let myself have a treat. Some people said I should be able to pick whatever I want. It should be a mood read. Some people said that it should be an owned book that I have to read or it should be something off of my radar shelf. But what I came down to is I wanted it to be a big book, which was suggested by no one. That is my goal that I regret most not having accomplished. So I think swapping it out will allow me to focus on it more. Now that does mean that there have been months where I've landed on 22 in 2022 three times. So I think that I'm going to have to make it where if I get like more than one or two that the rest are optional or maybe after one big book I do go back to my 22 and 2022 and I pick one like randomly that I still want to read. I don't know I haven't worked it out totally. I might even be like fretting for nothing because it might not happen. The dice have a mind of their own but basically the six that I'm still very much interested in reading as the year continues on is Nona the Ninth, The City of Dusk, In a Garden Burning Gold which I am actually currently reading. That is my 
one current read, Shattered Kingdom, Glow by Raven Kennedy, and This Woven Kingdom. So that is my reading stats for the first six months of 2022. Let me know down below if you have a statistics or a mid-year check-in or a mid-year wrap-up or whatever you want to call them. I'd love to watch it. I'd love to see how you're doing. I hope you all are doing great. I hope that most of you came away from this video positive. Even my failures I don't see in a negative light that's why I do this mid-year check-in because I want to see how I'm doing with these things and I want to see what I really still want to prioritize and I am totally okay with throwing out goals that I set six months ago that no longer serve me as I'm doing with my 22 in 2022 I see no purpose in forcing myself to read in a certain way or in a certain light that I no longer want to so I see no problem with ignoring goals, setting new ones, setting new boundaries for yourself, or re-upping old ones. I'm hoping that the rest of this year goes splendidly. I hope that you're all having a great day. I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye.